Jar Jar Binks has been one of the most hated characters in Star Wars for 24 years now, with many saying that he managed to ruin the entire first film, while also creating a lack of faith in Lucasfilm's ability to create another trilogy. This would cause some to send hate mail and death threats to the actor. However, what many might not have realized is how this would affect Ahmed best. The reason why I almost ended my life on the Brooklyn Bridge was because 20 years ago, I played Jar Jar Binks in Star Wars. But where would these problems begin? In 1997, Ahmed was part of a live performance group named Stomp, a group of street performers best known for their physical routine, using household items to create rhythm. This was something he was very passionate about, as it was just the start of his career. But as much as Ahmed loved Stomp, he was always hungry for more. More experience, but also a role on the big screen. Little did he know that what he was searching for was actually searching for him. Sitting in the crowd amongst the people was Robin Gerland, the casting director who was tasked with finding talented performers for a role in the next big Star Wars film. After the show, the two met backstage. Robin admired his skill along with his love for the art form, so she offered him a job. Ahmed felt as if this was the best news he had gotten in a long time, and being only 25 at the time, he felt like this was one of those magical moments in your career where all the dedication and perseverance starts to pay off. He was then informed that the character he would be playing was completely CGI. Soon after this, he would meet with George Lucas, where they would discuss specifics on the character, helping him really paint a picture for the part he would be playing. Ahmed was more excited than ever. This was a role he could only dream of playing, as he could completely disappear into the character. Now, fast forward a couple of months. Ahmed would be on the set of The Phantom Menace being told by everyone working on the film, including George, that Jar Jar was going to make him a star. So, when filming started, he put everything he had into the character, that being his voice acting and his stunt background. He even learned an entire martial arts form named Drunken Fist, which made the user appear to be weak or clumsy, something that he thought would work well with Jar Jar. As soon as filming began, he put those skills to the test, and although it was a lot of hard work, he enjoyed every minute of it. Additionally, he got to learn how much effort goes into making big films like this, along with meeting some big names and acting. These moments were truly something special to him, as he would often be seen on set with the rest of the cast, even when it was his day off. Ahmed truly enjoyed the work he was doing. The amount of effort that went into Jar Jar was starting to pay off, because even after filming was wrapped up, Ahmed enjoyed watching the character come to life, as he was created using completely new CGI, something that the people at ILM had to design from scratch, later evolving into a massive tool for filmmaking. This made the stakes that much higher, so everybody began hyping up his performance of the character, causing Ahmed to believe that this would open up the door to so many different opportunities. Well, that was the case until the movie came out. Hate like this was all too common, but why? The moment The Phantom Menace hit the big screen, fans quickly felt a disdain for the film. It was nothing like what they grew up with. The original trilogy wasn't about fancy visuals or being able to entertain children. It was simply a great story of a young hero finding his place in the galaxy. However, after watching episode 1, fans felt betrayed. The film seemed as if they were made for a younger audience, and at times, it felt like a spit in the face to the original story. So, they directed their hate towards the character they believed was the root of all their problems, Jar Jar Binks. Fans and critics alike saw Jar Jar as a gimmick, and a driving force of stereotypical racism. You see, they tried to pin Jar Jar's broken Jamaican accent on Ahmed, along with flat out blaming his portrayal of the character for ruining their childhoods. He didn't know how to defend himself against any of these claims, making him feel trapped in his emotions, and as he spiraled into a deep dark depression, he began to feel more alone than ever, especially because he was the only cast member receiving this extreme amount of hate. Everything he was told about Jar Jar being a star was long gone now. All because George Lucas believed that Jar Jar's humor was going to save the film. Jar Jar is a key to all this. If we get Jar Jar working, because he's a funnier character than we've ever had in any of the movies before. Well, although it didn't work, his old school slapstick humor did not amuse the general audience, and instead it felt like a distraction from the more serious undertones of the story. For example, we go from Qui-Gon Jinn being killed to Jar Jar jumping and yelling out of joy. Going from the saddest moment in the film to the most joyful was extremely jarring. Not to mention, he had the most amount of dumb luck ever seen in this film. Like being able to dodge enemies' blaster shots on accident. It really didn't make a lot of sense. All of this would leave nearly everyone annoyed with the character. Even Ahmed Best himself agreed with fans after seeing the film. Why do you think so many fans didn't take to it? I can totally understand why. Because when they see a character that's purely comical and purely for the children, they felt probably a bit condescended to. However, what he didn't agree with was when the fans took the hate a bit too far. 
You see, there are entire websites, blog posts, and reddit threads made to tear down Jar Jar as a character and Ahmed as an actor. These platforms are breeding grounds for extreme levels of racism, along with death threats, personal data leaks, and much, much more. The hardest part for me in that entire situation was all of the criticism that came from uh, a racially motivated now, while I can't agree with some of the opinions about Jar Jar as a character, that being his dumb jokes obviously designed for children, along with how he often interrupts emotional moments with humor, but all of these are things that are out of Ahmed's control. He had little to nothing to do with the direction of the character. Even if he did, it doesn't warrant anyone to go out of their way to harass someone on such a personal level. Although I would say the only mistake Ahmed made was trying to defend himself, as he was no match for the ruthlessness of the internet at the time. Imagine going from what you believe will be the best moment in your life, to abruptly finding out that it's actually quite the opposite. You see, Ahmed thought that these were the days he would look back on with pride and joy, but sadly they were met with regret and anger. Shortly after this, his career would slow down a bit, making small appearances in random movies and shows but he would never really play a character similar to Jar Jar ever again. This made him fully believe his career was over, along with everything he worked so hard for. So he went to the one place where he could escape. I would walk across the bridge and I would see the city and I would see the towers when they were there. and I would look at that and say, oh, human beings did this. and It would make me want to keep going. Although after the film, this place that was once full of hope and motivation was now something much darker. This time when I walked across the bridge, I didn't see the lights of Manhattan, I didn't see the towers, I didn't see the potential of hard work and ingenuity, and I didn't see anything, I just saw a fog. Ahmed was tired of feeling the need to explain himself to fans and defend himself from critics, so he goes to what only can be described as his lowest point in life. And I was standing at the other edge of the bridge and I was looking down at the East River and I had this thought. I remember that I went skydiving a year before, and as I was flying through the air skydiving, I remember having this thought. I remember if this chute doesn't open, I had a good life. Standing on the edge of the Brooklyn Bridge at that time, I had the same thought. I looked out at the East River, and I looked out at the Statue of Liberty, and I said, well, I had a good life. However, as he stands on the edge, with the water crashing below his feet, a gust of wind nearly pushes him off the bridge, but he catches himself. This made him realize that if he would have truly wanted this to end, then he would have let the wind take him, but he didn't. This proved to him that maybe this wasn't the end, or that maybe he just didn't want to give up. Either way, he climbed back onto the bridge and walked home, deciding just to take things one day at a time. 20 years later, he gained the courage to tell this story, and to his surprise, people actually cared. Even some of the people who chopped him down tried to bring him back up. This was also around the same time that fans would begin to have a better appreciation for the character, as they started to notice just how impactful he was to the overall story. Jar Jar also was surrounded by mystery, leading fans to create theories about how he was a secret villain the entire time. No matter what, I think it's safe to say that the Star Wars community was starting to accept both Jar Jar and Ahmed. Even though fans were just now starting to enjoy the character, there were still a small number of people who claimed that since he's an actor, he should have known how to deal with the hate. But other than that being completely false, it also made no sense in the case of Ahmed Best, as he was fairly new to acting. Like I stated earlier, he just came from performing on Stomp, so he didn't have anyone to help him deal with the pressure. However, some tried to justify their actions by stating that they weren't hating on Ahmed himself, but instead the character. Ahmed couldn't help but take some of the criticism to heart. He put a lot of himself into the character while putting in extra work to make sure that it was done right. Therefore, it felt more personal when the character was being targeted. This could be closely related to someone talking trash on an artist's painting. No matter how nice you critique their work, it still may offend or hurt them, as they put blood, sweat, and time into their craft. At the end of the day, actors are still humans, with emotions and feelings just like you and I. So maybe we should all take a moment to put ourselves in their shoes, to imagine how it would feel to actually have the whole world against you, or to be personally attacked for things that you have no control over. Because I guarantee that you will come to the conclusion that nobody deserves to go through what Ahmed Best went through.